Hey friends, welcome back to our channel. It's Jen here, and today I'm gonna be brewing a shu pour in a gaiwan. I will demonstrate with our shu pour coin, and feel free to grab your favorite shu pour and follow along. ago I did a video called Tea Detective. So in that video uh, I was brewing a tea that I didn't know what it is and because I didn't know the tea uh, I started by observing it in details and uh, going through a little bit more systematic uh, thinking uh, process in terms of how am I going to brew it. Actually, I would say it's a great process even when we know what this tea is. So in today's case, uh, even though we know it's a shu puar, it's a pressed shu puar, I still encourage us to take a closer look at the tea itself because even though it's all named the shu puar, there are so many different types and different vendors have different shu puar. So the brewing method will be slightly different and be sure to adapt it to the shu puar that you have. The one I have here is relatively, um, I would call medium press, not overly tight, but and not too loose actually. So that would affect how long do I steep it, especially for the first or second infusion. And this one has a press line in the middle which make that really easy to snap it in half and just have a half of the brew. One coin is about a seven to eight grams. So I'm gonna snap it in half and just use around the four-ish gram for today's brewing. First of all, as you know, I love to rinse all my tea wares before I get started. This helped me uh, smell the leaf better. that calming, very warm and leathery smell that's really um, settling. This is my everyday evening tea. If you ask me what's my favorite tea, I will always say Tia Guanyin. But what's the tea I drink the most? It's this one, every single day. Okay, um, wait. as with all poor teas, I use boiling water. We're gonna do a rinse. Because it's a pressed tea, I will be uh, giving it a little bit longer time. Especially when we brew uh, oolong, you probably notice it's almost instant water in and water out for rings. And this one, I actually give it like a, a few seconds more. If you're wondering what is a rings and how to rings and why to rings, Check out this video. Okay, first infusion. You can see from the liquor as you pour the water in that the rinse brew really help prep the tea. And the first infusion would be a little bit longer uh, because it's a pressed tea, it needs to have time to release it. As we always say when it comes to tea brewing, it's not that uh, strict second or strict degree that you should follow. Rather, you should uh, focus on the liquor color more because each teas are different. So even though we have videos say how to brew tea guanyin, it's just uh, a recommendation because you and me are not using the same tie guanyin tea and different tie guanyin have different uh, shapes and they require a little bit different uh, brewing techniques. 
I think mine is ready. Uh, the liquor color I would describe is <laughs> like a diluted wine. Diluted red wine is a reddish brown tone uh, or really deep orange with a little bit of brown in it. That's what you typically shoot for. And sometimes you will have shoot for that is murky and really dark. It feels like a soy sauce. You could consider brew it uh, lighter too. I guess I didn't say that clear. There's in general two reasons it could end up like that. First is a stronger brew, so it could look really dark. And on the other hand, it could also be the uh, fermenting process issue. It comes out uh, even when you brew it in a regular intensity, which you would know by tasting it, the liquor is still murky and dark and opaque. Uh, it's an indication of the tea quality. This is so sad. It's so funny. This is a tea I would call. I take that for granted a lot of times. I just throw that in my backpack when I go hiking, when I travel, when I'm at home, just evening. I always brew this tea and I feel like I forget to appreciate how smooth and uh, relaxing this tea tastes. Uh, but every now and then I get a reminder, like when we do events or when we have tea festivals, when people sample this tea, they're like, oh, this is a really nice shoe pour. It's uh, not so uh, dirt, like a, um, earth, not overly earthy and very smooth. And yeah, when I taste it myself, I'm like, yeah, I guess that's one of the reasons why I drink this every day. Second infusion. Well, this I will call the trickiest infusion because depends on how long you've been sipping your first infusion and if you let the kettle cool or you are bringing a new uh, newly boiled kettle there will be some impact on the speed you brew this infusion uh, because now the tea is fully uh, dissolved fully released <laughs> fully released and not as compact as the uh, dry leaves and they're uh, rather fresh. So there's a lot of power there. So the second infusion, usually we do a much quicker infusion. So with this speed, you probably is thinking, geez, it's almost like brewing a oolong tea. Yeah. And this is the, like the whole, I think in terms of brewing, what we're shooting for is in a kind of a consistency in the tea liquor itself. I don't know if it shows in the camera well, but it's pretty close to our first infusion. And as always, uh, the best way to figure out if you nail this infusion is to taste it. It's hot, so be sure to slurp it, to cool it, as well as to help you taste the tea flavor. I think I nailed it. Well, the, the, the woodiness of the pour is really coming out. This one is around uh, five years old. Third infusion.
when you pour the uh, hot water into the guy wine, you can also see the instant liquor cover, color. And that would also suggest how long it needs to be steeped. The third infusion is almost the same. Like the second one, pre, uh, pretty instant, I would say. Mm. And when I taste this one, I feel like, oh, it's slightly... The color you can tell a little bit, a little bit darker than the first and the second infusion and slightly to the stronger side, not overly strong. It's totally in my range of uh, great brew, but a little bit to the stronger side. So mm. I think this will also help me decide how long do I want to brew the fourth infusion. Let's dive into the fourth infusion. Well, Puar Chi, uh, Shu Puar Chi specifically, is not a marathon runner. Uh, with this kind of a leaf to guideline ratio, we're not expecting to, to sorry, I mean 20, 10, 15, uh, 10 infusions. Uh, usually it lasts around uh, five to six infusions. So the, this fourth one, I'm giving it some time. Mm. Well, I think this infusion is a little bit to the lighter side. The previous one, I guess because it was a little bit to the darker side, this one, I didn't give it enough time to uh, steep. Don't worry, we will just uh, practice, uh, brew, taste, and learn. There's no issue if you brew anything imperfect. I think that's the whole fun part of it. And even though it's to the lighter side, the, the smell, that warm, leathery, that uh, gentle woodiness, like all the flavors are there. It didn't, sacri uh, didn't sacrifice much. And as you can see, the liquor color is also to the lighter side. Well, let's try the next one. As I add in the uh, hot water in it, that instant infusion, the liquor color, would really help me judge how long I'm gonna brew this tea. For this one, I'm deciding to let it sit for a while. Here we go. It's back to that perfect color. You know, I made mistakes in my third and fourth brew. I smell, I taste, and now I'm back to what I call the perfect brew. They smell different. The third brew, when it was to the stronger side, it brings out more of that earthiness, that, uh, that wet earth, that kind of uh, aroma profile. While the, the fourth brew, which is to the lighter side, um, how should I say, not, light, not quite like a leathery, but it's the, the faint leather smell is more pronounced. Uh, well, what I like as the perfect brew is highlighting that woodiness as the, you know, the center of the stage. While the leathery, the earthy, that jungle 
are just undertone and that's what I like. Well, you might have different preferences, so never hesitate to play with the brewing time and uh, the leave amount. And today's leave amount is because I'm just having tea by myself. So if I am having a big gathering with more people, I could choose the same guy one size, but put the whole coin or something. So uh, there's a lot of a uh, playroom here. Officially, I would say this tea is done, but I personally have a little habit of doing super long brew, which means I'm gonna brew one more brew with whatever left, how much little water I have left here. And just let it sit here. I'm just gonna go about my day or my evenings and uh, in probably a couple of hours, I will come back and finish this tea. And at that point, I'll call that finish. And this is just really personal. Uh, you don't have to do this uh, at all. But the taste is also very interesting. It's not, it's not like spent. I'm not uh, drinking just pure water for this last infusion. It was, sometimes you will notice the difference in tea qualities and how they perform in that super long steep last infusion kind of thing. So um, feel free to try it out. Well, that's it for today's video. I hope you find this video helpful. Please give me a like and consider subscribing to our channel if you are also a tea lover. Until next time, keep steeping.